right. Welcome to KTB TV and my breadboard CPU build. I got a new camera and it is, uh, no, that wasn't right. There we go. Needed to change that slightly. I got a new camera. It's, uh, not quite as high, um, I think it only does 30 FPS, but you know, it's going to be a lot higher quality because I can also, wait a minute. Ooh, I can also do this because it's a real camera. Um, it's not just a webcam. So yeah, um, going to be playing around with that a bit tonight. Well, I finished my Ram build. So I, I, I've done some housekeeping um, since I was last online. Um, I played around a little bit with uh, the clock, trying to figure out something's wrong with my potentiometer. It does absolutely nothing. Um, so uh, I have to figure out that. I played around with the RAM. I, I did some calculations and stuff, and something's wrong with this. So um, it's not quite where it should be. Oh, you know what? I haven't even, straight up, I haven't even... Um, seen how bright the red is on this i want to i'm hoping that it's not going to be quite so red or not quite so bright oh excellent so um yeah the the red the red leds are not quite as bright as they were on the webcam um that was one of the things that i was hoping for uh is that it would not be quite as blown out as no i'm just gonna fiddle around okay um, not quite as blown out as it was on the other one. Um, so, uh, number one, I, I played around with the clock a little bit. I brought the clock down on the inside. This is where I can make use of this zoom. I'm not going to fiddle with focus a lot right now, but um, I brought down the clock along the inside so the the inside... Um, the last row, the most inside row on each of the breadboards now contains the clock signal. So it also means that um, I can just pull the clock over like this or over here. We pull the clock over and then, and then I had already connected the two up together. So, um, you know, that sort of thing. And down at the bottom here. Um, pull that clock signal over where I've needed it. So um, that's going to kind of centralize the clock a little bit um, so that I won't need to like work around the entire board for it. So that'll be nice, um, number one. And then, um, um, oh yes, the program counter. Um, I've added on some extra LEDs. Um, I have some chips coming to make the program counter go um, from 4 bits to 8 bits. Um, I also have some chips coming for here. I have one more register for the memory address register and one multiplexer. I'm probably going to move this up to the other section of the, um, like the manual entry section of the... Uh, memory of the yeah of the memory circuit um so that i can uh stick a couple extra chips down here uh and be able to so i'm watching my fingers on the screen and, and lagging my brain is lagging with it um to try and bring this memory address register up to eight bits once that's up to eight bits um, then I can use these four additional address bits to upgrade from six to, um, from six bits to, I'm sorry, from, uh, four bits to eight bits, uh, for address, addressing for the RAM. So it'll bring me from 16 bits. Oh my gosh, family. Um, from 16 bits to, uh, 256 bits or I'm sorry, bytes for the RAM. So that'll be nice. Um, and then I've got the registers over here as well, which we're going to hook up to the bus tonight. Um, and we're going to put the... Um,
program counter right above the uh, registers. And actually, um, I was realizing that I've, I, I also want to implement a stack with this. Um, I want to implement a stack with this uh, build. So this is the, uh, let me try to do this the correct direction. Whoop. Focus, good. So this is Ben Eater's design. Um, you'll notice again, four bit program counter, uh, four bit uh, opcode, four bit memory, uh, or well, four bit opcode and four bit operand um, for, the, for the instruction register. Um, and four bits for the memory address register. Uh, so what I was looking at is if I move where this, this is the reset um, or clear function um, for the CPU so that um, I can hit, I can reset all of the, all of the different circuits on the CPU by just hitting a single button. If I move that up here and then I uh, move this, which is the micro code like step. It's the step counter of oh, the instruction. Um, if I move that up one, or rather I move this entire thing down one, um, I can slip in here. I have an entire free breadboard and that entire breadboard, um, is where I'm going to put a stack counter. Um, so I, I, I have also ordered a chip for, or a couple chips for, um, a counter that can both increment and decrement. So I can count up and count down as I push things on and off of the stack. And since the memory chip that I'm using has not four, not eight, but it actually has 11 address lines, all, all of the black, um, lines here are address lines. So it actually has eight address lines, uh, I'm sorry, eight address lines that I'm going to be using for regular stuff. But I can change one of these to say, hey, when I'm writing to the stack, just flip to a different, um, flip to a different section of memory. And so I can actually use um, like address line 10 um, as the stack flag, essentially say, yes, use this, um, right to the stack instead. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've also added some of these, um, uh, these 100 microfarad, uh, or 100, uh, 100 nanofarad, I'm sorry, capacitors as, um, part of the power balancing to make sure that um, I don't have as many issues. I haven't done that for the registers yet, um, but I'm going to add these into the registers as well. Um, I'm just going to literally add one for every chip um, because that seemed to be the overkill solution, and it looks like I should have enough of those to do that. So, yeah, that's the plan. Um, so, yeah, what we need to do tonight is um, the first thing that I want to do tonight, rather, um, I've connected up, oh, yeah, did I, is that everything that I've done? No, I think the last thing that I did, obviously, is um, the biggest thing, which I mentioned in the Discord, there's a Discord link in the description, um, is that the original design for this had um, the, uh, this is the memory address register or manual memory address entry. Um, and this is the, uh, these are multiplexers for um, taking data off of the bus or data manually entered with this dip switch. Um, I switched these. So I, I had this up here and I had this down here. So I switched them around and I redid a little bit of the wiring here as to not repeat what I had already done. Um, this looks really nice right now. Um, and I'm very happy with it. It's not going to end up looking as nice once I have to do these. Um, and I'm going to be putting a chip right here um, to pull in the other, um, 
the other how many bits um four bits off of the off of the bus so you know we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um i've got at least some of the stuff that i ordered is going to be coming in on saturday um so hopefully next week i should have everything that i need for that and i can actually expand out the memory at that point um i think what i want to do first thing is i want to bring this up here um Mm, second thing is bring this manual entry up here um, and then uh, I I think that really the first first thing that I want to do is connect up these eight outputs to the RAM and these eight manual inputs to the multiplexers so um, let's start with that because that will get us in a really good position okay um i took off the power already yeah power's over here all right let's move a couple things out of the way over here I'm gonna oh wait no even before that hold on even before i do that the first 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 thing that i want to do i've been wanting to do this is i'm taking i'm i'm, I'm attaching this here um, and notice the way that I have these breadboards, I've removed both rails from the center breadboard. So I want to keep this one intact as well. So I'm going to just remove one rail here. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about the camera is that I do have a little bit of a, I have a little bit more space available to me. Um, assuming that I actually pay attention to where I'm working. Might as well just pull those both all the way out. All right. Okay. Um, here it is. Oops. Let's cut through the... Uh, there we go. Let's stab myself in the hand, and that's why I'm using the ceramic knife and not an actual razor. Though I wouldn't have put my hand there if I had an actual razor. Um, you I've, I've already trimmed off the um, the nibs on this side of um, these. I did that offline, so I wouldn't cut myself again um, here. There we go. So we've almost got the rest of our bus complete. So that's good. So. There we go. Um, I made, I, I pre-made this uh, clock line here. Oh, come on. Come on, big old fat fingers. Get in there. All right, um, there's that. Let's do power. It's interesting, actually. Um, the question is, do I do power like this across so that um, I have, you know, power on the f for both sides of the uh, the whole thing? I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, I can't show this properly. I can't explain this properly without. Showing the whole thing. So, do I have it so that it's outside, inside, outside, inside, or as it is like left, right, left, right? And I think I want to go outside, inside, outside, inside. So, I'm actually going to remove all three of these. Um, though, where did I just drop a. I dropped one of these, it disappeared. There we go. It was somewhere lost in lost in the stars. Um, let's see. There we go. I think that's where I want to be. It's hard for me to quite check exactly what perfect focus is. I'm not really good with um, this camera yet, so. Um, let's see. 
These should all be the same size, so it shouldn't actually matter where they go. But I'm going to try and place them back where they were anyway. There we go. One at a time, please. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, that's not right. That needs to go there. one on the outside the next time that I get in there the next uh, then for the next breadboard that I add um, I should be able to connect it on the outside all right there we go and then power on the inside and ground on the outside just as it's a mirror counterpart power on the inside ground on the outside so Let's hook this chip back up, both of these chips back up. Um, this is pulling the directionality low. Oh, this is pulling the direction, the direction pin low um, so that it only ever writes out to the bus. Uh, yes. Um, this one is powering that chip. This one is eh, powering that chip. All right, done. Okay, so then the first first thing is I think so I've got to bring five bits here and three bits here so. I'm gonna bring them down this way. Should I just bring the three over like this? Or the, um, I'm gonna connect this out to the bus here. So should I bring the three bits? Cause they're, all three are gonna be from this chip. So I bring them like here. Hmm, yeah. Well, let's get these four um, we're going to pull them over and then down here. So let's start with that. Get the wire clippers, which I am slowly getting better with. Um, discovered that I can't at least go wider if I put this here. I can always go smaller, which is not great, but let's bring this over here. So, um... Um, oh my goodness, just all sorts of notifications happening on my wrist tonight. Um, so I think I, I chose to do addresses in green and then data in blue, um, at least because this data is going to go out to the bus. Um, I think I'm going to do green from here to here though because um, it's the green is coming in and then this is going out. I don't know, I, it's all arbitrary, it doesn't matter. All right, um, how far am I cutting this? Actually, oh shit. I think we're gonna break out the other green tonight. Yeah, that's it, that's, that's the last of the green in the box. So, um, but this is the last thing that I'm using the green for on this, um, section. So that'll work fine. All right. Um, 
Oh, I have to I have to pull up what bits are which coming up here. So um, I'm looking for bit seven. Um, a bunch of stuff is eliminated on this. Um, bit seven, yeah, because this chip is different. These are eliminated. Um, so these are what I'm looking for, though. So I am looking for bit number seven. So bus seven should be going into um, number three. So bus bit seven, oh, bus bit seven is going into number three. Okay, so two and three go in, number four comes out. Okay. So three in, four out. One, two, three. Number four is out. Um, and then I want to make sure that it goes to here because I'm actually going to just pin it. Uh, should I pin it here and then draw, drag them straight down here? Yeah, because it'll just let me do it in two pieces, which I know is kind of silly, but um, uh, I want to do it anyway. Uh, Pull that out. Trying to do this as I can um, on screen and hopefully in focus for most of it, but. Oh, that is not quite bent right. Oh, there we go. Bend it just a little bit closer and we should be good. Yes. There we go. So that'll now I can bring that one down here. Um. So then two and three is pin is pin seven. So pin six is five and six. That's correct. So um, oh, actually I'm realizing. Let's go. There we go. Um. is gonna gotta, I gotta remember where my uh, where my line is of where where I'm in shot which is here on the on the chip itself so this one here comes to there It's a little bit short, but that's okay. This is as long as I have it marked correctly, I should be able to strip it correctly. Yeah, yeah it's a little short, but yeah, it's good enough. All right, cool. So that's bit six. Um. Sorry, I'm just realizing I want to make sure that I'm lining these up correctly, and I am. Okay, cool. Yep, because this is six, seven. I'm sorry. This is zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, six. So I need to go five. Bit five is coming around the top. I'm gonna bring this around here. And so um, that one goes into pin 14. Uh, no, 13. Uh, 16, 15, 14, 13. And it comes out of pin 12, yeah. So this is gonna go into 14, and so pin 12 there. Okay. Uh, all right. And let's see. That 
should do that. That'll work. I've marked where I need to cut it anyway. Eh, come on. Let's see, cut it here. Okay, so I cut it there. And then... There's the strip point. That's a little bent. Okay. There we go. That works. Hmm. Actually. Is that better or worse? Worse. Okay. Get get as many um, like perfect ninety degree angles as I can, but. All right. So then bit, so that's bit 765, so bit 4 should be going into uh, 10 and 11 and comes out of 9. 10 and 11 comes out of 9, yes, okay. I know that that shot of the uh, schematic was not very good, I apologize, but also just trying to, trying to figure this out as best I can. It's actually, it's so interesting because um, I don't really know how to use this camera too well. Yeah, but I also can't um, seem to edit these shots as best I can. Um, so I can't get like, I can't really adjust the focal length too much at the moment because I need to figure out how to do that on the camera, but all right. Um, my point is, this is coming out of nine. Um, so number nine here it should actually be coming on the inside of that. I'm realizing. So let's keep that on the inside there. Yes, 90 degree angles. Normally not good with cables, but with wires like this, it's happening. Um, still not quite tight enough, actually. Need to rebend that a little bit closer in. There we go. That should do it. Yeah, that'll work. So that works there. And then we cut here. And we strip here. Okay. Come on out. Come, come on out. Yeah. Got my nice 90 degree angle back there. Nice square up that, square up the, the breadboards a bit, maybe. Um, This one now looks so far out, but one's a little bit in and one's a little bit out. So, all right, perfect. So 
we got those four bits there. Um, let's get the fifth bit over just so that it's it's done. And then I'll run the five cables down and then, or the five wires down, and then we'll figure out how we're getting them down to the next three after that. So let's start with, start with the fifth here though. Um, bit number four goes into three, so it comes out of four. being a pain in the butt. Is that hole a pain in the butt? No, it's just being a pain. Actually, yeah, oh, bah. bonk, bonk. Um, yeah, I will bring that across like that. And then it can go in here, which means I can cut it here. and strip it here. Okay. Just to make sure I don't cut along the strip mark that I made. I did not. Good. So, coming out of four, going into here. Perfect. Eh. It's a little bit short, actually. I have to. I think I'm overcompensating for the uh, mistakes I have made in the past with cutting it too short. Yeah, coming out of four, and going into. Well, all right, what if I go in down here? No, going up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's that'd be great for um, pin three, but. Uh. There we go. Pin four. Pin four. There we go. All right. Right in on HMS pin four. I'm gonna reset that one right next to it so that it is a little bit, yeah. Okay, cool. And it'll probably tie it down a little bit when I move, when I pull some across from this in between here and down over here. So let's start going across because these um, four, these five bits can go straight across um, without, and, and can be all the same length, so. Let's uh, find out what length that is. Strip here, cut here. That should be perfect. Yep. All right, just gonna cut all four of these that same length. Or strip all four, or yeah, no, cut, cut all five of these, thank you, five five of these the same length, so that's two. Let's see. Three. Oh, this will be, this, this last bit of green will give me exactly enough for these. Four. Yeah, look at this. Oh, that's shockingly Shockingly perfect. This is this is the amount of excess that I have from that. And now it's in the most annoying possible place. There we go. Alright, now let's make sure that this one I can strip to the correct length. Alright, 
straight across here. Uh, is too, no, uh, this is just catching a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Now I need to pull it out so that I know how far I need to strip on these. That's actually, yeah, it's a little bit bent in, so if anything, strip it a little bit aggressively. Shove that over a little bit to even it up. There we go. Let's see. Yeah. If anything, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit long. So. All right. Let's see if we can get these all to their correct length and now that I am just going to kind of wing it. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, YouTube, I'm still listening. Why are you uh, being a jerk about it? Okay, there we go. All right. There we go. Nope, 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 nope. That's one too far. No, nope, that'll work. Perfect. All right. Last one, then we'll figure out the hard ones. And we'll open up our new roll of green. The new roll of green wire. Oh, uh, I heard a thing, and I totally missed where it was and what it was. What am I missing? Bling, bling. I'm hearing it. What the heck, Twitch dashboard? Why aren't you telling me what's happening? Huh. Well, thank you, whoever is, um, I'm taking a wild guess following. I apologize for the, um, lack of recognition here. Huh. Weird. Yeah, my Twitch chat, uh, my Twitch dashboard is just apparently not telling me whatever is happening there. Um... Nope, not that. Trying to pull up um, stuff on the other side. Twitch stats. No, Twitch, uh, Twitch activity, um, Twitch activity feed. Yeah, I'm just seeing um, some follows from a few days ago, but thank you to uh, whoever is following. I assume that is what's happening. Very odd that it's uh, not telling me what I'm expecting. Unless it's something specific with the alert box that is being a jerk. Weird. Anyway, 
Um, because I'm pretty sure that noise is for, um, for alert box. Um, very odd. Huh. I've never had it, like, falsely alert like that before, so. Or at least not tell me anything. Um, anywho. Alright, so there we go. We've got five bits in. Let's get the other, uh, three bits in from over here. Um, let's open up our new roll of green and see what we can find. Huh. Still so confused by um, what uh, did or did not happen. <laughs> the sound effects. Unwrap all of this, please. There we go. All right, brand new spool of green wire. Um, now I can put it in the uh, box. So I think I'm actually gonna switch blue and yellow because um, I like having the blue and the green next to each other and the yellow and the white next to each other. For no reason in particular. No one cares how I organize my wires. Except me. And that's fine. It's not even like... It's like, it's like black RGB white. RGBY white. I don't know. got my uh, convenient spool of wire here and start figuring out where we're going with it. Now it sounded like bits. That's really what it sounded like. Um, pretty sure that's the sound effect that I have for bits. But all right, so number three, I'm gonna start down here. I actually, I, you know what? I want to, I want to actually get that a little bit deeper, just because it's around a bunch of other stuff. Um, so I want to make sure that it is completely in there. There we go. Um, so that's gonna come up here. I'm gonna. Bring it up nicely. Um, where, what, uh, what bit am I going to? Number three. So we're going to uh, number seven. Is that right? Number seven. Yeah. Wait a minute. This one's in the wrong one. This is in number six. I put this one into the wrong one. This is the incorrect blank. We'll fix that in a moment. Move that over a little bit for for just for the moment. Um, let's see. There we go. Get a trying a nice ninety degree angle there. And let's see. Yeah, see, it's it's kind of pulling out of this, and I don't like that. There. I think that will help. All right. Uh, out of number seven, so this is number seven's right there. So let's mark that where it needs to be. That needs to be stripped. Mark that. And then cut it. 
down here. Okay. Pull that out so that I can get at it easier. Ah, come on. do it. That's going to be bit number three. So bit number two. Uh, hold on a second. Let me uh, let me reset what numbering I'm at. Oh, let's fix this. Um, I think I can just get a uh, get away with a. Uh, a little bit extra metal poking out there to get that into number seven. Can I do that? No, that's way too far. Way too far. All right, so this goes in the, the shame basket. Um, ah, and I do have one that I've made before that was too long. Let us swap those out. There we go. Is this one I can uh, this one I can just trim a little bit. That's why I keep oh. just tossing my wire cutters across the room, it's fine. Come here, come on. You there. Yes, thank you. Sounds like this is it sounds like something is rattling in this song. I'm pretty sure it's not my headphones, because my headphones are not up that loud that it's going to rattle anything. Alright. There we go. Alright. That one actually goes into seven. Not into six. Did I just cut this short again? No, I think I've just I think I just bent this a little bit short. Everything's fine. All right. There's no way I cut this short again, right? Seven. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I just need to bend it down a little so that it actually goes into the holes instead of kind of shoving its way back out. All right. No, stay in. All right, this one here can go down here. Why does this not want to stay in? Is it because it's a little bit crooked? And it's a little bit long? Um... There. Now it is definitely long enough. Seven. There. Yeah, that now it's too long. See? I'm trying to adjust this over and over again, and I just I can't seem to get it quite right. I don't know why. Uh... Alright. Seven. There, that feels better, okay. Now can you sit here? Does that work? You sit there? Everybody's happy, okay. Everybody's happy. Stay. Jeez. All right. Um, uh, but could they be happier? Like that? Yes, they could. 
can you be even happier like that? Yeah. That actually, okay, that works much better. I like that. We're sticking with that. That's what's happening. Um, okay. Number three, you're good. Or rather, number two. So bit number one uh, is going into 13, coming out of 12. 12. Um, forgot what my process was for a moment. I just kind of... When, what tool am I supposed to be picking up right now? All right. All right, so, oh yeah, we're starting down here. So coming out of bit one, data bit one, coming around, mm, come around slightly further around the outside, data bit one, not that far. Not that far! Mm. Uh, actually, uh, I could, yeah, I could just drop this down one here. I could. I don't like it, so I won't. And let's bend that down a little bit so that it goes over the rest of these okay there we go this has got to come up and then I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna bend it here again so it's still gonna come on the inside of that and then we'll bend it up here oh. bend it up here like this yes so then we can bring it across here and down into 12. There we go. That should work, uh, presumably. Yeah, that, yeah, that can work. I think that, I think that Having that one go a little bit tighter will help. Cool. Oh, this is going way on the outside. Um, even with me bending that down there, that's going way on the outside. So let's try that again with here, and then up here. How about like that? There we go. All right, number twelve. So we're gonna strip here, which means we're gonna cut here. Cool, that'll work. Ah, almost pinched myself there. bend this in the right direction. All right. So you go in here. Come on around here. Everybody's happy with that. Number 12. Oh, number 12 right there. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. You just need to kind of fiddle around a little bit with how it's sitting. Um, yeah, I think I am going to put that there. Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. There. All right. Um, I think the only thing is I want to bend it a little bit further up, which means that I need to bend this one a little bit. Ah, not that far further out. And then straighten it out a bunch. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. It was nice and then I just made complete structural changes and things went things are worse. Things are definitely worse. Things are definitely worse. Yeah. Uh yeah. 
that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to call it there. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely pulling this side out and bending that way further so that it, it really jumps over those. There. Same with you. I'm going to bend you in a little bit more so that you're uh, going to push down on this corner here, which should hold the rest of it down. All right, one last one. <clears throat> Shoot, you know what I'm realizing I'm doing? This is power. Um, I need to pull these over one pin each. Which means they're not gonna, yeah, they're gonna sit a little bit in between those instead of. Um, I sit a little bit in between those instead of uh, beside them, but that's fine. I'm not worried about that. It's fine. Why do I, I keep bending this towards me instead of down? And it actually makes it more difficult for the rest of this. All right. You need to bend in so that you can go into here so that I can get it zero on the inside there. Because I can get bit zero here. Assuming I actually... Uh, give myself enough room. Oh, what, uh, what pin am I going to again? <laughs> uh, hold on. A bit too wide of a turn there. There we go. I'm going to pin nine. Yeah, I can go to there. Right, pin nine? Pin nine, yeah. Alright, I've marked it. I've cut it. Let's see if it will stay after I strip it. Oh, I, I bent it the wrong way. All right, it's fine. It doesn't, literally, that is the easiest thing to fix. Okay. There, there. Is that pin on? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think I want to change the angle that, or how far this is when it bends. So let's bring that a little bit further in. And then this one a little bit further down. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, that should work there. And now you can go in here or up here. I really want to make it nice the way it will make me feel the best me to be. say so all right there we go so we've got our <laughs> we've got our eight bits in from the bus and going to data in for the ram excellent now i need to attach across here um to get the multiplexing for the manual as well as the bus so um, now that I have the room here, because I want to, I, I wanted to see how much room I would need with this. Now that I have the room here, what I could do um, is um, I want to have the manual, the manual button or the switch moved up, but I also want to have the button available to me. So 
I think I'm going to move the button over here, and then I'm going to move the the switch up to here. Um, I think I can I can probably move this out a little bit more. Um, it doesn't need to be right up against it. Um, give myself a little bit of room. Okay, fine. What is the exact center? I have 63 rows. Uh, so let's say there are 64 rows. If there are 64 rows, then 32 is the exact center. Oh, actually, this will work because it's right 29 to 34, or 36. That that That's good enough. That'll make me happy. Um, all right. Now I need to connect these. Come on. Pay attention, Kevin. All right. So we'll go backwards this time. So connecting um, pin zero. No, we'll, we should start the same thing. This way, work this way. Pin seven um, is going to connect to number two over here. So. Uh, so. This is the pin that we are working on. Let's just, you know, in case I forget. Okay. Which is <laughs> me forgetting is entirely plausible. Um, So I could try and get it in here, or I could bring these down and just kind of bring them across there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I think I might actually do this little angle thing that I've been doing with the clock. Uh, pin number two. Yeah. Pin number two is here. So this is, I need to strip here. Then I need to cut here. Didn't quite get it. Okay. Uh, shoot, I'm not sure exactly where I need to um, where I need to strip this. I did not make a clear enough marking there. I'll just hope that that's right. I'll know real fast if it's not. Yeah, that's good. Cool. All right. Um, and I will put in the opposing um, resistors after I'm done with this. So that's pin two. Now pin um, five. Come on. Come on. Actually, I'm going to strip you a little bit further down just for your insolence. There we go. Um, so, pin seven, sorry. Pin six? Whatever. This pin, the next pin, is going into number five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, excellent. I know that I, uh, I know that I should have run these before I did the other ones, but I wanted to make sure that I put this in a nice spot. Hold on. Oh, got muted in time for that sneeze. Oh, good. It's nice to not blow out anybody's headphones, even if I have the compressor on. There we go. In five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm actually a little bit long for this. Huh. There we go. Um, 
in five. Yeah, that one. Perfect. All right. Yes, pin five. Now pin 14, which is 16, 15, 14. Third in over there. There we go. So, do pin six or five, depending on who you ask. Now, what time of day you ask me? Actually, I'll put this down one lower. It does not matter, it's not staying there. Um, I'm going to put that down one lower, one closer. Can you mark, please? Thank you. Cool. Two marks. One to cut. And one to strip. Now which is which? Assuming I don't have any other marks on this wire at the moment. Which I do not, thankfully. Yeah, keep bumping the camera with my head. Haven't done that in a while. All right. What up? Yeah. Um, the lens that came with this camera. I know I need to get a. A new lens but the lens that came with this camera is not the best for this sort of thing but I still think it's gonna be better than my webcam so All right. let's try that again number six uh, yeah it's fine yeah actually that'll be great if I can just bend that in a little bit more there we go all right, so that's six. Let's move on to five. Dip switch number five. Data bit number four, which is going to nine. And this is why I wanted to have that one in the inside as close as I could. Because now I have to go to the outside. So I'm actually going to pull that up a little bit. Because I'm going to place it there. Well, I said there. And this gets stripped here. And gets cut. Okay. Come on. good um that's number five number four oh i'm so excited here because that means i can start properly inputting stuff into memory um which i have already tested slightly but it it's still i i want to make sure that it works the way i want it to all right um Number four, so we're going down on back on the bottom here, cross here, going to number 12. No, I'm sorry, number two. 
number two. Um, yeah. Mark there. Click here. Yoink. Hmm. Alright, let's see. Now I've got to get under this, which is why I, you know, I should have done this in a different order, but I wanted to get all the other ones done, okay? Yeah. Alright, we'll pull these two up. You know, make sure we put them back in the right spot. It's fine. I will actually leave those up for the moment. Number two number four perfect perfect that actually worked great number three and number five To number five. One, two, three, four, five, five. Yes, and that should be there. Good. Okay. It's two away from two away from the output, so that's good. Okay, there. And then clip over here. That might be a little long, but we can always cut off a tiny bit of excess. Can't put any back. All right, number three, getting in here, sneaking in under the wire for number five. Uh, come on, you going in or what? There we go, yeah. It's kind of bent around a little bit, but I'm okay with that. All right, these two can go back in on number nine and oh shit this doesn't go in nine this goes in uh 11. i will fix that um this one however goes in number 12. um so because the output is number nine oh glad i caught that now <laughs> All right, fine, I'll do this. I want it to be as close to the uh, chip power as possible, so I know why I have this random uh, capacitor. Um, all right, there we go. Uh, that's taken care of. Actually, instead of bending that up, could I just uh, put it in here? Yeah, let's do that instead. That'll work. Okay, um, let's fix number nine being slightly too far out. Okay, clip off a little bit of excess there. Nope, oh, that was too much. It's, it'll still go in, so. Things you never want to hear a moil say. Alright. That's your Hanukkah joke for you. Hanukkah joke of the year. As you know, apparently I have to have one. Um, don't. I don't know. Listen, things. Things. 
don't make sense in my brain all the time, okay? All right, let's try this again. 11 and four, five, four. Eight, seven, six, five. Yeah, five, four, three. So two coming up on the top side again. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Try and get that slightly squared up. all the way to number 12, which is where we are here, right? Yeah. 16, 15, 14. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. That's not right. I'm sorry. 12 is the input. We're going to 14. 16, 15, 14. Yeah, 14. 14. here and then we cut this just past it why did I put down the clippers I put down the uh, wire strippers that is not what I intended to do bring this down into the uh, one below it here yeah what if I put this on the inside yeah you know what yeah let's put this on the inside there we go that that's better now I have a little bit more room to work with out here that works okay good Last one, first dip switch, bit zero, going to 11, not to nine. 11. There we go. Let's get lots of excess there. Glad I went lots of excess because it wasn't as much as I thought it was. It's actually not a lot at all. I would say zero excess. All right. Let's see. Can I get that in there? That one in there? Excellent. Okay, so now I just need to hook up the selector bit and we'll say move this up here all right to this one um yeah now i'm going to i'm going to keep it like this uh what do we want to do with this actually Um, I can leave this, I can leave this down here, pull up the, uh, oh yeah, I should move this over one. Oops, should move this over one, because that'll, oh no, wait, no, it doesn't matter, it does not matter, never mind, never mind, never mind, we're good, because this is going to go into a different slot, this can stay here. 
so that can go there this will go here there we go and we've got our lights and uh, our switch that can go either way good there this is a little bit too long I think Yeah, that feels better. This one's fine. All right, so we've got our light, our our LEDs there. Um, we need the resistors for the LEDs. Um, and the resistors for the LEDs are actually going. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that is anode down. Yep. Cool. Yep. Resistors for the LEDs go here onto power. I said the resistors for the LEDs go here, oops, sorry, onto power. There we go. Okay. Um, so now the selector for this, I wanna make sure the stuff coming in from the bus or in from the register goes into the right hand one. Yes, so the same way that I had it here, I'm going to have it go over here. So, um, let's see. It's actually kind of a control thing. So I'm actually going to do this in yellow. Um, this yellow is for clock and control signals. So the yellow here, just move that up out of the way for a sec. So if red is on, then we want this to be high. Otherwise, wait a minute, want to be high, <coughs> AKA all the way over on that red one. There we go. Um, otherwise, we want it to be low. Should I switch this? Should I have red on the right and green on the left? Because it'll be more convenient. No, I like the red being the outside and the green being the inside. So it's like red is the left hand, green is right hand. Um, so let's put this in here. Ah! Just throwing my tools all over the place again. What happens when they're spring loaded? Especially when I can't flip them around in my hand correctly. Strip here. Cut here. Perfect. Okay. That should work. And then these two are already connected there, so. I think I connected them with white because that was what was conveniently pre-made. <laughs> so, um, I'm also gonna bend that down a little bit. So we're gonna go in here. Uh, excuse me, here, across, and oh no! My, did I do this wrong? Did I? Uh, no, I didn't, but the, uh, it's going to be tough to get in. Okay, hold on. There we go. Whoop, whoop. There we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, I think, yeah. If I get that there, that'll, yeah, that'll work a little better mentally for me cool all right so i've connected that so now i need to connect this control signal back down um on, get that focus correctly again so i've got this connected over here so now i need to get it down to here um, and I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to leave it 
No, I, I will pull this out and I will connect it over here. Because I'm going to get that additional chip, and that additional chip is going to be here, but I can always cut the cut the um, excess and connect them separately. So, um, it's fine. So... Hold on. Hold on a second. Um, it's a, I don't know if my wrist popping could be heard on the uh, microphone, but that was pretty funny. All right. Then we gonna, what the, all right. Mm. And we gotta, there we go. Gotta bring it down over here like this. Perfect. I feel like I should, uh, I feel like I should probably run it underneath those data lines there. Yeah, there. And there. Okay. Yeah, this um, this one here is, is is it's bent down, and I don't want it bent down. I just want it bent over. Wrong um. Wrong axes. So, you go back in. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, I am gonna, I am gonna, um, pull these here. hold that long uh, long strand down there we go yeah, I'm trying to trying to get the angle so that it, it helps hold itself in the pins <coughs> all right so that's all of the control there right? Um, and then this is in here. Uh, yes. All right. So the button is supposed to be so that either the clock or the um, button will write, will send a write signal to the RAM. So this is a multiplexer, right? Oh, shit. The, this is a multiplexer here. I need to bring the signal down here and then also right here. I, you know what? Can I get away with it? Yeah, I think I can. Hold on, I think I can get away with cutting this in half. Um, so let's see, oh, right. Trapped. Uh, no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up on the other side. It's fine. Um, well, I'm gonna need to. No, I'm gonna need to pull it up here. Just boop. Hey there. All right. So if I bend this here instead, and then down here, uh, and then well, and then strip there, 
So I need to strip right here. And which means I can cut just the minimum amount that I need to. Okay, hold that thought. Um, I'm gonna, I hate I hate stripping them while they're still in the board because it doesn't give me the flexibility that I need. Okay, that's yeah, that's not gonna work well. Let's see. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna bend the cable or the wire, whatever it's called. I work with cables at work. I work with wires here. I, they're both long and colored and neat. <laughs> long and covered in colored plastic, okay? All right. All right, so that should be those nice angles there. That goes here. Good. So now I can rebend this because it's going to be in closer, right? Yeah, so... Oh, no, oh, let's make sure we put that in the right pin, huh? Um, no wonder that... Um, this bit that's supposed to be going straight down looked a little bit crooked. Uh, let's see. Ah, <laughs> got caught on the dip switch. All right, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Good. Oh, that makes me happy. Some nice 90 degree angles in there. Okay. Oh, that's better. All right. There we go. That makes me very happy. Um, so. So, what is the, what is the next thing? So we've got our multiplexers, all of our multiplexers hooked up to our um, switcher, our selector bit. Um, so the right button, the clock should go into the multiplexer. Wait, do I need to put the clock in the multiplexer? Oh shit, I, I don't need to. Oh, I need to talk through this every time. Okay. So the clock doesn't need to go into the multiplexer. Um, but I do need the rising edge of the clock to go into the multiplexer. So it's actually interesting because, so I want to make sure that the clock goes into um, the, I believe this is an inverter and then an OR gate. Hold on. Gotta, gotta look at what these numbers are. This is zero four. This is zero eight. Is that right? This is zero eight or zero zero. I can't tell. I have to pull it closer to my face because I am blind. This is zero, zero. So this is a NAND gate. 
So I know that I, um, I'm also putting it slightly up, I know. Um, I know that I specifically was looking at using both of these. So the idea is that the button writes to memory. Uh, it's the clock and the write bit. But in this case, I just want the write bit. So I don't think I need the NAND gate. I think I just need this inverter. Um, or the inverter, because the inverter is going to help with my RC circuit here. Um, yeah, it's the clock. Oh, I see. This is how he's improved the RC circuit. So, a lot of people complain about the RC circuit that he puts in here. It's a resistor capacitor um, circuit that when he presses the button or takes the rising edge of the clock or whatever, um, it... Um, yeah, so he takes the clock, he just takes the rising edge of the clock and the right ID, and he says, okay, or I'm sorry, the right, right ID, um, the right in flag, and he nans them together, and so only if the right flag is low, I'm sorry, only if the right flag is high, and we are at the rising edge of the clock because that's what this RC circuit will give us is the right edge of the clock. Yes, okay. So on the, if we're on the rising edge of the clock and the right ID is high, then it will NAND it together and it will give us a low circuit. Alternatively, we can press the button and the button is, can be connected to ground and that can bring us low and then this can be collect, connected to our selector pin. So, because this RC circuit, um, this is a 1K2 ground, by the way. Um, this RC circuit uh, will wreak havoc on the clock signal because you're putting a capacitor on the clock line. So instead, what people have recommended is put it through an in put the clock through an inverter, invert it, invert it back, and then connect the RC circuit because th then you basically have a diode. Though. I actually think I have a diode. I could just put a diode in. Um, don't I have a diode in here? I think this, yeah. I may be wrong. Let me uh, see if I can focus in on this. So this, MIC. IN40 MIC. This I, I I may be wrong. This always looked like a diode to me. It was in this kit that I had bought for playing around with um, some breadboard stuff ages ago. I um, mean that always looked like a diode to me, but I don't know what it is. I'm basically going to use the inverter as a diode um, to make sure that there can't be feedback on the on the clock. Um, on the clock circuit. That's the important thing. So, we're going to take the clock, we're going to put it through the inverter. So, we're going to take the clock, bring it all the way over, put it through the inverter, put it through the inverter again, then bring it over to this NAND gate, and NAND it with the write in signal. Um, yes. Okay, so first things, we're going to take the clock. Going to bring the clock over. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, um, uh, wrong things. Whoop! Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Oh, I should probably make sure that I actually hook this up to power on ground, huh? Um, yes, I have. I happen to have an extra ground here, so let's ground that. Oh, and I have to ground my um, dip switch, too. I have a couple extra grounds in here.
So we'll ground those and we'll uh, power those up in a moment. Ah. Um, yeah, I will give the extra room that I need over here. Mm, I did not uh, quite do this quite as nicely as I wanted it to be, but here we are. There we go. And then I'm going to have to angle the power out on that one too. All right, I will power those up in a moment. Well, I will connect them to power in a moment. First thing is um, I need to take a look at the schematic for a... Um, how in focus is that? Perfect. For a NAND gate and an inverter. So the inverter, yeah, I can take... I think I'll put it into number three. I'll put it into number three come out of number four, attach the capacitor between number four and number five, and attach the resistor from five to ground, and then take the signal coming out of number six over. That'll work. Okay. Um, yeah, so. So uh, I'm taking the signal out of number six, connecting between, that's another input, this is an output, this is an input, yeah, number three, okay. Oh, uh, alternatively, I could pull it from the top. Um, I could also like bring it around like this. But that seems that seems silly. Yeah, let's do it on the top ones. It doesn't matter, right? Um, this is an output. This is an input. This is an output. This is an input. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do an input here. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually gonna, I actually am gonna sneak that underneath all of the rest of that stuff there. Um, let's strip where I need to strip first. Uh, I did not do a good job marking that, but I think I see it. All right, there we go. We'll actually bend that after we get it under here. There we go. Of course, I uh, bent it in exactly the wrong direction, but that's fine. Keep turning. There we go. So that it goes in well. All right, so there we go. We've got this. Uh, yeah, that'll be good. That'll work. So that's my clock across there. So bring my clock here. Um, so clock in, and then uh, capacitor. What What's the capacitor that he's um, recommending? Because I can do the math for it, but I don't feel like it. Uh, a 10 nanofarad capacitor and a 1k resistor. Um, I have put all of those in here. Um, I believe that's a 103 resistor. Let's double check that. 103 resistor, 103 resistor. No, yes, 103 resistor. Yep. <coughs> This is my bag of organized resistors. I've organized my resistance. This is my bag of organized capacitors. Um, give me one of them one dem dem one o threes. One o threes. All right. There we go. That's a one o four, of course. Oh yeah, so it is. A, it is a one hundred three. I um, I uh, just 
again, the picture is slightly deceptive there of what a size comparison they're going to be. Um, this is the output, goes to the input of the next one. Um, and then I'm going to put a resistor across there too. Resistor, a 1K resistor. Here's my 1K resistors. All right, 1K. I think this will um, give the rising edge of the clock. It will trigger a high for about 10 milliseconds, maybe 10 microseconds, but I need it only for like, a, you know, a, a couple, maybe like 60 nanoseconds, I think is the shortest that I can have it. But yeah, again, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. Um, this can get put back in my box. My Radio Shack kit. Let's put this to ground. So in, oh. there we go. So there's our RC circuit and that's now got a diode with the clock. So we're getting our, oh shit, did I uh, hit power in, out, ah. I, uh, yeah, I screwed that up a little bit. Well, <laughs> let's move that over one. Let's, let's move this over one. Let's move this over one. Yeah. Cause now that's input and that's output. Yeah. Let's strip a little bit more off this. Um, I'm actually going to strip a little bit more off this end because it's a little bit more in need there. All right. So, putting it backwards of how I had it, again, doesn't matter. <laughs> it is not a uh, unidirectional wire. Um, there we go. Let's go there. And there. Underneath all those. Cool. So we've got our circuit from out to in. I'm actually going to switch this direction because I don't know. I feel like it's like it comes in here, then it goes out and it charges out there. But while it charges up, it's going to bring this. So it's going to NAND this over here. But before we do that, let's um, get power on these. That's long enough. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. Power up these two chips. These two chips and these handful of gates that I need. There's one power. Oh, come on. You. There. There. And then the other one.
actually. I think that this one is just a little bit longer, so I'm going to use it for the uh, one where I need to do it at an angle. And this one is a little bit shorter, so I'm going to do it where it's straight across. That, yeah, that, that's better. Okay, so now coming out of here, going into here, coming out of here, going into the selector bit on... No. Going into actually one of the... Um, one of the actual inputs on that, obviously. <clears throat> and then coming out of here and into the right bit here. And the read bit is always held low. Um, because if I'm always reading, I'll always be able to have these on, which is why I'm actually using this chip. Because technically I don't need it with this, but I want to always be able to see where I'm at. And when the write bit is high and the read bit is low, I can read. And when the write bit is low, it doesn't matter what the read bit is. It's going to take in data instead. And these will just pull it low. No, these won't, these won't do anything because they're diodes. All right. Uh, so. Make sure that's... Press those down again. <laughs> I, I touched things and now things are slightly uh, slightly different. All right, coming out of here into here. All right, out of here and into we're gonna say, Oh, not 14. 14 is um, on those muxers. 14 is enable. So, I'm sorry, 15 is enable. So, 14. Um, so, actually, I'm going to actually bring it into so 16, 15, 14. I'm actually going to bring it into 13 because 13, that's the one that's automatic on the other muxers. Uh, oh, this is the. I'm sorry. This is a. Um, this is an AND gate. This is not the muxer. So never mind. Or line selector, whatever. Um, it's not a muxer, it's a line selector. So never mind, I lied. I'm gonna do whatever I want. Yeah. Uh... Actually, I'm going to bring that into the pin 14 there because uh, I still want the left hand one to be uh, manual select. So, um, so there we go. And now this one here, and we're going to actually put up a pull. We're going to put a pull up resistor on that as well. Um, uh, though I'm gonna put the pull resistor over on this side so let's see we want to make sure that we have no floating inputs uh, so from here go over and then straight down yeah uh, nope all right, there we go. Straight down to here. Let me mark this here. Eh, excuse me, we mark this. Excuse me, we mark this, thank you. Um, and then we cut this here. All right. Cut off a little bit of excess. All right. In. Go in. Go in. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Apparently, I uh, 
my angle there is a little bit wonky. No, all right, fine. Yep, that's just gonna be a little bit long there. All right, so we've got this. Um, now on this, on these, I believe that this, I, I, I believe if I'm not mistaken, that, no, stay nicely. I believe that both of these sides are connected and both of these sides are connected and pressing the button just connects the left half to the right half. I may be wrong on that. Um, so I'm actually going to put my, uh, yeah, hold on a second. I'm trying to figure out where to put my pull-up resistor. Um, yes, yes, YouTube, I'm still listening. Hold on. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to put my pull-up resistor here. Um, and that's going to be like a 10K resistor. Um, I should stop putting my organized resistors away. 10K ohm resistors. All right, I have a few mega ohm resistors. I forgot about those. Um, I'm going to put it... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pull-up resistor. Why not? Um... Put a put a mega ohm resistor. Oh, fuck it, whatever. All right, so put my pull up resistor here. So now this will constantly be high. Yeah, because we either want it to be high at all times. Yeah, we want it to be high here. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If this one is... Hold on a second. Yeah, this... Over here, the clock will go high. Um, and this capacitor will charge up. And during that time, oh, uh, my brain needs to remember this exactly. I need high inputs for a high, for a low output. If I get two high inputs, then I will have a a a low output. Oh, that's because I shouldn't be nanding this here. Oh my gosh, I'm so freaking dumb. This, this should always be, okay, so yeah, whenever I bring the, um, right in, um, whenever I bring the, the RAM in signal high, then when the clock goes high again, the clock will go high briefly as the capacitor will charge up. And eventually this um, will go low again. So it will go high briefly and then it will go low. So it will go high briefly with this, meaning it will be on the leading edge of the clock. This goes over here. This goes straight into here. It doesn't matter how long it takes. So this goes straight into here. That's what I'm, that's why I'm stupid. Okay. So let's just stick this in the, uh, the box of shame. Try this again. Oh, yeah, we're gonna do this first. Hold on. Um, I have to remember to power and also enable this MUX chip, which I'm going to need to put one enable bit in. Yeah, I keep mixing it up with the uh, the four bit counter and thinking whether or not I have a. Uh, whether or not I have to put it, uh, put two enables in or not. All right. Um, so, uh, there. So we're gonna say you, oh, no, maybe not that. Maybe like here. 
All right. And then you can come over here. Uh, over here and go into that one. So, oh, I'm sorry. So let's check that. So the bits counting down from bits, uh, counting down from pin 16. Yeah, if I can get my damn strippers in hand. Um, no, hey, right there. No, uh, yeah, this will be fine. Um, the pins counting down from pin 16 are power, enable, and then A1 in. And I want my manual to be uh, the left hand one. So yeah, so this one here should go into pin 14. So that it gets stripped there. And then I'm gonna cut it there. This one is going to go into pin. Yeah, I'm going to put it into this pin. Um, I'm also going to need to move it in a moment because uh, I need to actually, yeah, we'll put it there. Yeah, the clock is kind of like all over the place up here. Um, okay. That'll work. Uh, let's bring our, let's do power and enable. Our enable is an active low, so we will make sure we always enable the muxer. The, it's not a muxer, it's a line selector, which is different than a muxer. I just dropped some thing here. Ah! Wait, where did you come from? What are you, what? Oh, I really hope that didn't actually fall out of anything important. <coughs> uh, okay. Yep, we'll just hope that didn't fall out of anything important. Um, I don't think... I don't think it could. No, this is power. I'm just... I'm trying to do this one too nice. This is just power. Yeah. And yet I still screwed it up. Hold on. Hold on. This is why I've been doing power with the um the pliers and the old uh the old um wire cutter is because the size of those pliers, the width of those pliers is perfect. Alright, there we go. Um, let's bring this, let's get two lows for this. Here's power. I'm sorry, here's the, here's the ground for the power uh, for the chip. And then here is the enable bit, enable pin. go oops slightly bent that a little bit more than i wanted to but here we are this is the enable pin all right perfect so um and then we've got that goes in there so now this one 
has to come out of that NAND gate. And actually, let me this control. Let me put this low because I want to keep it low. Low. There we go. So I'll keep that low so that um, when I write, I want it to go high and the clock to cycle. So let's bring this out of here and over to pin number 13. Okay. Let's see. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, slipped a bit and that uh, was trying to cut that at 22 gauge instead of 20 gauge wire. So, um, oops. Uh, just kind of was grinding the wire itself instead of uh, instead of actually stripping it. All right, so this comes out of here and it goes into here. gets cut out here. Ah. Almost nipped myself a bit there. Because it popped out at me, which would be very embarrassing if I had been able to stab myself with the uh, blade on the inside while it opens. Um, okay, so coming out of there, going into here, Um, yep, that's the thing. I really want this to be down a little bit more. So I will do that because I can. All right. There we go. Uh, so this one or this one, and then that goes right out. Right out, and that goes there. All right. into the right pin there. That is too long. Just barely too long. Come on. Okay. All right. That... I believe it is a completed ah I need to put uh I need to ground this um I need to ground this uh wire here. Almost I almost said it and then I realized I was wrong and it was fine. So let's ground the button. Let's ground the button. And when the button is grounded, then I believe we have a completed um, a completed RAM circuit. Uh, you know what? This is really dumb. I think I'm going to move this over one. 
Is that dumb? Say I'm conflicting with a bunch of stuff over here. Nah, no, this will work. All right, got plenty of room where this button is, so I can put it wherever the hell I want. All right, so let's zoom out for a, a bit of a an overview here. Okay, so put this over here. So let's see, I'm gonna hook up power, but not yet, because I want to ground all of these. I wanna ground the bus. <clears throat> so let's make sure that we ground everything on the bus. because I can then start to flip bits on the bus and everybody will be happy, but mostly me. All right. Um, actually, hold on, Let me move these up here. to make sure that I uh then I have to make sure that I have all of my extra like clear bits and stuff set before I get very confused. Alright. Ready? Alright, so the bus is grounded. So, um, that's, I'm just going to write to the bus manually, obviously, um, for checking that. We're set to be on manual input. Um, our clock is not halted. These are permanently enabled. Oh, this doesn't actually get anything in off the bus. For Oh, no, no, no. It all comes in off the bus here. It goes out to the bus here. So, we're not going to, we're not going to worry about that for the moment. So this this chip is its own thing. This is the um, four bits in from the bus, or our manual. All right, I think we're ready to power up and test. So let's see. Our right is low here. Uh, we're on manual, so we'll be doing manual data both ways here. So there's actually nothing that's uh, there's nothing that's showing up when I flip around in the uh, when I flip around in the memory addresses. So I don't like that. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, I think I just wrote some low stuff there, um, which indicates to me that not actually bringing these in correctly. Hold on. <coughs> um, oh, we'll make sure that this is off, by the way. Uh, yeah, make sure that that's off. So, yeah, no matter what I do there, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's see. Let's check what's going on here. Let me, let me just try writing in something random. Yeah, that has not done anything. So, oh, uh, duh. Right. Okay. That has done nothing. Let's see what I have screwed up. None of my chips are backwards. That's good. Let's start, um, let's start probing. Um, gotta 
untie this. I've been keeping it twist tied for neatness. Just for moving it around, it's been easier. All right. Actually, I'm literally going to keep it that way. Just going to undo one loop here. Come on. Oh, fine. Fine. Yeah. All right. We'll get ground in here. Ground over here. So now we've got this. Okay. So power. We have power. Okay. So, and we have power on the chips. Not gonna, not gonna worry about that too much. So, this clock circuit goes high and then low, and then high and then low. And actually, if I put this to manual, it goes high and stays high. Ah, but on the output, it's not even showing me that it's going high at all. So, that's fascinating. I wonder if this, um, if I were to switch this out for a larger capacitor, say this one that I'm going to steal from the clock circuit for a moment. Um, how can I, how can I wire this in properly? Um, so, that's a larger one. So it should char should should take longer to charge. So oh, so that's interesting actually. So this is going from high to low. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So it's staying high. It's going low. And then it's kind of staying low, which is not not what I'm expecting it to do. I am expecting it to um, I'm expecting it to go low very briefly. I'm expecting it to go low very briefly. Oh no, because obviously I had it plugged into the wrong one. I had so yeah, no, no. so this is good. So so it's inverting the clock output. That's good. I, uh, I was looking on the wrong one. Uh, let's probe the correct one. So here this is low. Should go high very briefly. So that's interesting. When I hit it, it goes negative for a second. So like something funky is happening. Something funky is happening, but I'm not sure what. I don't have an oscilloscope to really um, properly check this. So this is the input. Let's see if we can look at the output. High. Yeah, it's not really changing. So I'll have to figure out the RC circuit. Let's stick with our... Um, let's just check that that's still working. That's still working. Okay. So I'm going to have to figure out the RC circuit. This is high, and then, so the input of this is low, the output of this is high, the input of this is low, the output of this is high, so we are high, and then this is low, so when, oh, all right, yeah, no, this is, this is what I'm screwing up here. Um, yeah, that 1K should be going to ground. That 1K is going to ground. Um, so the input of this is low. Ah, I got it. I should be inverting my clock signal here and I'm inverting my RC circuit. That's what it is. Um, that's why I'm screwing that up. Um, So let's take our output there.
Um, oh, hold on. So I'm going to take my clock signal. I'm going to invert it. Um, hey, there was a there's a little minor piece around here. Yeah, this one. That hopefully didn't fall out of anywhere important. So my clock signal is now inverted. So let's see. <clears throat> so I've inverted my clock twice, which means that my output here, currently low. Oh, let's plug my power back in. Currently low, should go high. It goes high. So I want it to go high br very briefly is the key. So my RC circuit um, is going between the clock signal and the resistor. The clock signal and the resistor. Oh, hold on. one button is really driving me nuts. You go here. You go here and here. So actually tie the clock down with the resistor which is really funny all right so the output of this will go high briefly as the capacitor charges and then stay low so we should see um so nothing is happening here because i'm not actually plugged into anything huh this is my output signal or my input signal we'll say It goes all the way to five volts and it stays at five volts. Why are you staying at five volts instead of draining? Um, why are you staying at five volts instead of draining? You should be draining. This goes to ground, right? It does. It's a 1K resistor that goes to ground. Um, yeah, 0 0.1 microfarad resistor, a 0 0.01 microfarad resistor, which is what I'm using, the 103, connected from the clock signal, uh, from the clock signal, which this is input, output, input, output. Yes, and if I look at just that, if I look at just that, it is properly inverting my clock. Good. So, from my clock signal to a resistor and the input through a 1K. Oh, no, the 1K. The 1K resistor um, should stay on that circuit and go to ground. Um, okay, hold on. You, fine, go back, ah. All right. Mm-hmm, 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 mm
My brain can't read the schematic and figure out how to frickin' do it today. The resistor is connected to ground. The input is connected to the resistor. The input is connected to the capacitor. Yes, okay. And then the capacitor is connected to... And then the capacitor is connected to the clock signal. Okay. All right. So there we go. Let's do this. Let's check. I'm just going to pop this here um, for a moment. Connect that over. Now I press the button. Or no, I'm sorry. I press the clock. And I should see the um, circuit go high briefly, though. In this case, I need a bigger capacitor. Um, I need a bigger capacitor because I need to see it happen. I need to see that voltage change on my multimeter. And I don't have an oscilloscope, so... So this is what I do instead, is just say, make it happen a lot slower, would you? All right. Hmm. Does this go high at all? I mean, this goes high, right? No. Oh. Press the right button. This doesn't go high. This stays low. If I remove the capacitor, this is staying low. Why is this staying low? Did I screw with my clock? Wait, what about you? Oh, wait a minute. I've completely screwed something up here. This is my clock signal. Do I need to put this back? No. My clock signal's not going high. What? The shit? Oh! My ground came out. Whoop. Put that up there. My ground came out. No wonder I'm so freaking confused. All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So my clock signal's going high. Even with this out. Put that in. My clock signal is going, getting inverted. Okay. Um, that there. This here. Uh, this one here. Alright, I hold this and it's staying high. But, what about on this side? That is, that is straight up high there, no matter what. Why is that high? Should that not be low? It is, oh! Uh, yeah, this should be tied to ground. Uh, that was a me mistake. Not, uh, not during the rest of the thing. Okay, so let's try that again. So this is, Tied to ground. It bumps up for a second. Hold on. Um, bumps up for a second, but like not a lot at all. Yeah, on this side it stays high. Let's see. Yeah, it definitely it's definitely moving a tiny bit. Um what if I pick a really big capacitor? Um, if I pick a really big capacitor, I definitely should see this draining. I should see it go high and then, well I should, yeah, I should see it go high and then see it 
slowly work its way all the way down. Um, I don't have my bag of capacitors. Where's my bag of capacitors? It's not in here. Is... Where did I put my bag of capacitors? I have my bag of resistors. I have big bag of resistors. Uh, 10 kilo ohm resistors. Where did I? Did I drop it? I know I have a, a, a couple of, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of capacitors in here, but they're not the ones that I'm looking for. Like I have these capacitors, but these aren't the ones that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the yellow ones. Did I throw them out? Where the hell did I put these? Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, seriously, like, did I? Am I sitting on them? Like, what the hell? Not that blind. Am I? All right, I have LEDs. Those are over there now. Chip. Resistors. Not what I'm looking for. I got this out of that bag. I got this out of the bag of, of capacitors. What did I do? Like put it on top of that damn camera? I know having this bag of capacitors here is incredibly confusing, but it's not the one that I'm looking for. Um, bumping the, bumping the microphone and everything. What the shit? Put them in my pocket or something? No. Breast pocket is not. Where did they go? How did I lose a bag of resistors sitting in one place? Or a bag of capacitors sitting in one place? Where there's no possible place that it could have gone. It has to be within a five foot radius of me. Did I put them in the bag of resistors? I put them in the bag of resistors instead of the one mega ohm resistors. I put the bag of capacitors in. Oh my gosh. They're hiding beneath all of the other resistors. They were resisting me. All right. I think I've punched that joke to death. All right, you. All right. So the pin and the resistor. The pin and the resistor and the capacitor are all, there we go. That is trash, that can't go away, all right. The pin and the resistor and the capacitor all um, all touch each other. Alright, the pin and the resistor and the capacitor all touch each other. And the capacitor comes from the input. There we go. Yeah, that's how that should be. Okay. Uh, 
Um, this is still in. Let's turn you back on. And so if I look at this line right here, I can hit the clock. I should be seeing it going up. Or I should be seeing it, yeah, get some sort of charge across it. Um, Cause I should see this go high. I see this go high. I should see this go high less briefly than that. I should see it go high for like a second. I should see it go high for like a second. Um, as it drops down. Because as it charges up. There's no way that I'm putting this in the wrong direction, right? I mean, I'm definitely seeing something happen. All right. I am frustrated with this piece of this. I'm frustrated with this piece of this. Um, what I do know is what I do know is I should be moving these around so that they make the most possible sense please you go over here Ugh. can't even get it a good pull resistor over here okay you go to ground you go here and then this goes here. And I'm gonna need to change that this one. Should should probably zoom in a little bit with this, huh? It's not quite as wide as I want it to be. Cause we're not doing the whole thing right now. So coming out of the out, out of the capacitor, coming out of the capacitor and going there. Signal in, touching the capacitor, touching the resistor. Resistor goes to ground, capacitor goes to clock signal. In theory, this is an RC circuit that should work. I don't know that it is working that is um, if I switch this to auto and switch this to auto um, yeah see nothing is happening let's say that we ignore that and we just go straight for Bringing this low. Move this. Yeah, I don't think that this chip is working correctly right now. I should be writing in two bits. Uh, okay. Yeah. Either way. I should be writing in two bits. There. A couple bits high or a couple bits low there and um, that is definitely not happening so let's see let's see where we're at with that then okay so that can shut off for a moment um, yeah because this should write and then I should be seeing it here that's not happening so let's see bit zero 
Yeah, none all of these bits are low. All of these bits are low. Um these ones. Let's see. Yeah, like all of these should be high. Oh! These are the ah, that's it. I see what's happened. I see what's happened, at least part of it. These are always going to be wrong somehow because I need to make sure that um, I actually add these resistors on. Um, I don't have a lot of 10K resistors left. Um, I need a few uh, 1K resistors. Okay. Um, I need eight pull up resistors here. I'm sorry, pull down resistors. Um, so that, um, yeah, because I need to connect this to ground, um, when it is connected and high when it is not. So let's, let's see about that. Um, Just gonna vaguely place some things around here. Hold on, I need to put this this away correctly. Is this a 1K resistor? This is a 1K resistor. No. Is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Need to make sure that I wasn't <laughs> putting in a random, random size. Um, so these should be pulling up. Sorry. These should be pulling up. Um, you up. <clears throat> um, I can make this neat. There's no reason to not make this neat right now. That's uh, very, uh, very close there. A lot closer than I thought it was. Hold on. Clip that even shorter. This one I'm gonna move slightly. I'm gonna move this one here. There we go. So that way I can get a little bit more room for the other one I need. Um, whoop! facing slightly differently it does not matter it's the least thing in the world okay there we go all right up and up and up and up and up uh two more here um which are thankfully straight across
make sure I get the bands the right way so that they all face the same direction because it's nice. It's nice when things all face the same direction. hole the other hole all right okay and now I've got to pull them down on the other side too um, um, but let's put the rest of the other four resistors in Gotten four more 1K resistors. We'll put these back in the bag. Put this bag. Oh, this bag back in the bag of resistors, but not the bag of capacitors. Staying organized. Resistance organized. Um, let's get these last four. Can I cut these all at once? This is a terrible plan. Um, yeah, here's a terrible plan. Do you want to cut these all at the same time? I do. Yeah, that was super short. not cut them quite so short on the other side, shall we? <sighs> okay. Alright. So. Let's see this one here. Let's, let's get the pliers, because I feel like I'm going to need the pliers. This one here. Oh, to power. Shit. Got sh <laughs> I got even shorter on one side, and now I need to bring them in further. Alright. That's not good. Um, power. Power. Good. Alright. is all the way in and just yeah all right how oh well that's a problem that's a big problem all right i'm gonna switch this out with one of these because that one's longer and so i'm gonna stick this one up here Where it will go into power one rail away. Where it will go into power one rail, rail away very nicely. Thank you very much. In the correct direction the first time. I really hope that that's actually far enough in. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know that this is long enough. Like, I definitely, I definitely clipped these a little bit short on one end. I knew it was a bad idea, and I did it anyway. I always buy more resistors. That's not a problem problem is knowing whether or not uh, <laughs> they're a problem. All right. I'm going to pull this 
last one out too, just in case. Swap them out for the shortest possible runs I can get. There we go. All right. Now then, this one has to do something funky, which I think is going to be, let's go into the power there and then come over there. Yeah, that'll work. Go into the power underneath the uh, address line there. Um, that's super awkward. Yeah. Okay. So. Ah! Alright. Now I can stop hitting my freaking face on that. <clears throat> Alright. Let's try this again. Where's my uh, other half of my multimeter? Alright. So. You are I. Oh. Um, except I didn't actually. Uh, this is. This is just randomly high. How are you high? Oh, because it's uh, because it's connected. That's why. Yeah. So I need it to be low. All right. I need to put in the low bits. <clears throat> or the low the low low batteries um all right this is the correct length let's get eight of these <laughs> That's five, six, seven, I'm realizing that four of these are going to have to reach a little bit to get to the um, to get to the ground rail. So I'll have to not bend them like this on the on the pliers, but um, just bend one end, slide it a little bit, and bend another. Or, you know, you get one like this. Like that. There we go. This one is going to have to reach. So, oh. So let's go there. I suppose I'm putting this in right now because apparently I'm a sucker. Oh shit. These lines are really going to be a problem. Uh, there. There we go. Okay, now I have. Wait, no, wait. What? 
no, these ones, these ones are good here. Um, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, because I'll need one here. Oh yeah, I'm actually going to need to put them the other way, huh? Okay. There we go. That'll actually be slightly better aesthetically because now we've got that angle on all four of those. Um, this just goes here. Okay. Uh, oh no. Because I need one here too. So that goes over there. This one goes over here. And now this one goes here. And now this one goes here. Ugh. Awful. All right. Do not like. Just have an extra one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. my halt. I think I think that's where that goes. Oops. All right, that stays there. Um next mm, This one isn't really I mean like the other one. I can cut I can cut longer ones than this. Um put you there. No, go, go straight down. There we go. Okay. All right. Why? Trying to like twist this in the worst possible way. Okay. Now this can replace that one there. Okay, that'll work. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, yeah. Okay. Uh, I see. I see where I'm really gonna start to have trouble here. That didn't, uh, that didn't do anything. There we go. No, 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 not in the power, in the ground. Go to ground. Okay. Next. Is... these two yeah so you continue to vex me um, you continue to vex me um, I'm gonna need to do one one across like this and then one over across like that. Ugh. <clears throat> Not great. Not great. here. 
That did not work at all. This isn't wide enough, is it? Hold on. Come up. There. Yeah. Okay. That can work. Okay. Yeah, this is the wrong thing. Here we go. So that is uh, way too wide. Hold on. Let's see, this one then comes across there. Good. Okay. Okay. Let's just check this. Hey, my clock doesn't do anything. How'd I fuck up my clock today? <sighs> Did I put these back? Did I put this back in the wrong thing? No. Let's see. Is this pulsing? This is pulsing. So it's just my my switcher here. Okay. So if I follow you here, you're gonna get five volts and then not five volts. But wait, did I mess with this? Did I screw up my output somehow? Uh, hold on a second. Um, yeah, my input here is going up and down properly. Then this input is... Yeah, so it's literally, oh, my halt. Uh, I, I, I've screwed up my halt somewhere. There we go. There we go. Okay, so, my, so it's my halt. I, I, I put it back in the wrong thing. <clears throat> Goodness. Okay, so this is low, unless I click it together here, in which case it is high. Okay, good. That's how it should be. This one is low, unless I bring it high. Good. So, bit number eight. High, correct. Low, correct. Switcher here is currently low but then can go high. I should, this is just barely low. This is just barely low. 1.9 volts is not great, but we'll say for the moment that that is acceptable. So bit eight goes, or yeah, the, the last bit, the highest bit goes into number three, pin number three. Uh, pin number three is not showing me anything. Oh, I'm sorry. The highest bit goes into pin number two. I'm sorry. Pin number two. Good. That is showing me exactly what I'm expecting. And I should be multiplexing to that, but I'm not. If I just pull this, then I am high over here. Yes. So I multiplex there, but my output is still not correct. Um, if I were to instead make sure that that output gets pulled low, 
now ah uh, I wonder so this is five volts here and is out here this is yeah this is too high I need this voltage here is too high so if I were to say yeah there we go okay so my right should be my right pin is also um, ah, right. Of course, these data pins. So these data pins are, are having issues getting over here as well. But if I write, and then I turn all these off. Um, interesting. My output is dropping to zero here. This is only only showing me on or off and again yeah no that's all correct there except for again except for the one that I'm testing which is really interesting um, pin 8 and pin 8 comes over here and is low and I come from here. Yeah, my output is correct there. Ah. This is... Yeah, this is going into the correct one. But what about uh, where the output is? Let's see about where that output is. Um, the output should be coming from pin number four. And is instead coming from pin number three all right so there's a start of some things that are wrong yeah come here come here Should be going from here to pin four. Pin four. Pin four is the output. Ah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So pin four out there. Oh, I bumped my button. Um. Why is it so weak? Why is the light so weak there? Like these other ones are so strong. My light there is so weak. Um, how many volts am I getting across here? 1.8. I'm getting 1.8 volts. that really that bad of a connection? No. Something's wrong with this. Because I'm getting 4.32 volts there. So I'm getting 4 volts out. But then as soon as I cross over... As soon as I cross it over, I'm getting too many, too much droppage. And if I pop this out, it stays low. Oh, that's interesting. Hold on a second. What if I write that? Ah, okay. Uh, when I was reading it. Oh. When I was reading it, um, this was low. Or I, I had written zeros here, so that was low. So if I write, yeah, I see. So if I write, if I write all ones there and then turn this off, 
Um, all of these go to zero. What if I pull this cable? Uh, oh, shit. Shit. Out of curiosity. Yeah, no, the them being attached to the bus will do absolutely nothing. Oh, well, that's a problem. Um, the zeros that are being output here are connecting these pins to ground. So they are writing correctly, but then they're just getting pulled to ground. Um, yeah, this doesn't give like a high impedance. It just pulls it to ground. Which means that I kind of need to run this through a... Um, a, tra a bus transceiver. Oh, no. Huh. That's... Fascinating. So we've got two problems at the moment. Um... We've got two problems at the moment. The first problem is that um, this is dropping the voltage too much um, for, this is dropping the voltage too much for when I um, am connecting it here. It's not, wait, no, is that, is that a problem? Is that actually a problem? Hold on a second. I'm pretty sure that's still a problem, but do four out. Yeah. Uh, versus the highest pin goes high. Yeah. Yeah. So this is dropping the voltage too much. So I need a. I need a different. Um, I need a different resistor there. I need a maybe a four and a half or four point seven. I think that a ten will probably be too um, too dim. But I don't think that I have a. I don't think that I have a, a. I don't think I have a four and a half. I think I only have ten k resistors. Is my next step up? Um, versus this one k that's in here right now. Hold on. Let's stick that in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's dim, but it technically works. And now, no, that, uh, that's still not, uh, oh. Wait a minute, that's getting that from the train voltage there. Okay, there we go, how about that? That's still picking it up off the bus. This is going out to here. This is going out to here. Um. Huh. Yo, it's got a ton of voltage coming back into it. Holy shit. Yeah, 1.79 volts coming in? That doesn't make sense at all. Yep. If I take that out, 1.49. I mean, like, I think that'll be the same, the same thing if I pull this out. Come on. Out. 
Oh well, yeah, I know this. Yeah, 1.78. Oh, wait a minute. What is this resistor? I have a 10k resistor right here. What the shit was this? I had a 10k resistor connected down here. What the... What? Okay. I'm gonna put this 1k resistor back here. Okay. Now, the voltage here is 1.9, which is still a lot, but, uh, or still, still not a lot, rather. Okay, so let me take this here. You, give me. Uh... This is a 10k resistor down that I just grabbed randomly from down here. I don't know why it was. Oh, you know what? I think, so I think that on this, I was pulling it low. I should have been pulling it low. Hmm. I wonder if that was... wonder if that that's what I was doing, was saying, hey, oh, hey, pull this high, or, you know, hey, pull this low, unless it's going through there. Um, wait a minute. Hmm. 1.9. One point nine volts versus I mean does this give me one point seven wait one point seven volts? Zero over here obviously. 1.7 volts. Shouldn't the voltage be dropping less? Maybe I, uh... Maybe I need to get a, two, a 220 ohm resistor in here. Where's my memory address register? Yeah, from power to, from power through there, through the switch to ground with 1K resistors. And I mean, that definitely had worked before. Um, but now I'm getting, oh yeah, no, no, this is, so it's high. Oh. I'm so dumb. I want it to go low. I want it to go low. So it's high right now. And my output on four is low. If I can get it to go... If I can get it to go low... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where am I supposed to be connecting this? Am I th is supposed to be connecting this to which side of the... <clears throat> which side of the LED am I supposed to be connecting this to? Ah, the side on the switch. That's why. Okay, hold on a second. Let's say that we connect this here instead. And you... We're gonna also assume that we connect this. Ah. Hey, go in. There. Okay. Now if we pull this, there we go. That's what it is. 
Okay, I connected it to the wrong side of the LED. Um, because I want it to go to zero. Not high. That's what the problem is. Okay. Alright. Let's fix that. Which then explains that the 10k resistor that I was putting in there, the 10k resistor that I found connected down here, um, was actually there so that, um, was actually there so that I had it as a pull-up resistor. Um, okay. Um, let's see if we can get that set there. And nope, that's still not short enough. Um, This can go here and there. Nope, still not short enough. <clears throat> trying to take like two millimeters off every time and I'm... <sighs> and it's just not enough. All right, so you... Pull this out for a sec. Uh, no, under the, under where the switch goes. You here, to you here. There we go. That's good. I'm good with it wrapping around a little bit. You. Ah! No. I pulled a lot of things up. Hold on a second. Uh... bunch that just like is all over here all right clock signal in please this one it's a button signal there we go that goes there and this comes from the output here to here I'm gonna move this back over here for the moment and put this back in for the moment um, um, because that should at least stay high, right? Yeah, that's high. Okay. Okay. Switch. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. I unplugged it. That would be why. Alright, there we go. That's better. The problem is still that these are kind of tugging everything else low. <coughs> They're tugging all of these low. Can I put them into here with the bus? No, so um, this will go out to the bus. Hmm. Hmm. 
I think I'm going to have to take a step back and try and um, I think I'm going to have to take a step back and try and okay good the right the right button works that's good I mean the rest of it isn't but um, I think I'm going to have to take a step back and figure out how I need to redesign this section from here to here to see if I do need to go through um, a bus transceiver. Do I have an extra bus transceiver? I don't. Mm. Did I order an extra bus transceiver? I don't know. I don't recall. I don't think I did. I might have, though. Did I? Let me see. Because if I put these through a bus transceiver, then they'll disconnect. Alternatively, so let's see. I take the output from here, which is either the output from the bus or the output from this right yeah but no if i try and connect the bus up here to take this out to the bus then if this is connected to it then i'm gonna get that mixed signal um so i need i need another bus transceiver i think that's really what this comes down to is i need another bus transceiver I'm gonna put this back actually. This um I'm gonna put this 10k resistor back because it should help tie everything to ground. Um so that I don't have any hanging inputs, because that'll actually tie here, here, and here all to ground if this is not attached. So that's really funny that it um apparently it's enough input through here to do that so don't think I can hmm. what do I what do I get for my voltage on this I get three volts oh I'm sorry I don't want to tie it to ground I want to tie it high I keep forgetting what signal this should be taking. Yeah. Um, tie this high. There we go. So that is now five volts there, or zero volts. Yeah, zero volts, five volts. Good, or damn close enough. Good. Um, yeah, because if this is tied high and this is tied high, then nothing is going to go except it's just going to flow out through here. Yeah. Yeah. So this pull up resistor will help. Okay. Um, which is why it was there in the first place. Oh, I'm so frustrated that, like, so much of this. I'm going to have to tear so much of this apart. There's no way that this enable here will leave this as high impedance, right? Um, let me see. Let's see if I if I write all these high, then I remove this. But what if I write this high then I write it? then I remove it no it's still it's still outputting low so it's not a it doesn't have a um, high impedance on the 74 LS 157 Hold on, let me check that it does the enable does not give it high impedance it just gives it um low 74 LS 157 um, 
A quad input multiplexer. So they do like calling it multiplexers. You know, it's, you know, whatever. It's a line selector or multiplexer. Um, yeah. <coughs> multiplexer outputs. UL. Wait, what is it? UL? A uh, one TTL unit load equals four microamps. Yeah. Four microamps high, 1.6 mi milliamps low. Yeah, I'll put low drive factor. Yep. Um. Common select input, yep, and then inverted, enable active low input. Um, yeah, if enable is low and select input is high, then it will output whatever is on the line. Yeah, if it, yeah, if it, if enable is high, then it will output low so it, it it will just output low on all of them so it's not like i can even get away with these being <sighs> multiplexed out i i just i need another um bus transceiver chip to connect from here into the bus transceiver and then to this which seems really silly um, yeah, because I'm either taking it in from the bus or I'm putting it out from here, right? That's the point, is that I'm, I'm figuring out what's coming from the bus. How is it in the original one? Yeah, in the original one he's got the, um the bus transceiver connected to the outputs and then also the I'm sorry in the original design he has the bus transceiver connected to the outputs of the well the inverted uninverted outputs of the um of the ram And he takes that output. Yeah, it's because it has a separate input. Yeah, so this this is what I have right here. This is this is essentially what I have. Um, I think that the resistors and the the series here is flipped, but this is what I have. But because there's separate input lines. He can connect it directly there. I don't have separate input lines, so I need a different bus transceiver coming from here to connect into the input-output data lines to be able to um, to be able to uh, connect this here. So I can leave these connections from here and here. The thing is, I just need to have a bus transceiver between here and here. It's just not like I really have a uh, room for one. I may have to. I may have to fiddle around with where I have put some things. All right, I'm gonna have to redesign this um, slightly from. For, for this data input there. I should have seen this coming. Um, yeah, I take the outputs of this, I put it into a bus transceiver, and then put it into here. And then everything works, right? Because then if I'm reading, 
wait so the bus transceiver then yeah the bus transceiver is only active when i'm writing so when i when i when i get my right signal i turn the bus transceiver on i get my right on um presumably i won't need to Uh, the, how long does the right signal last? Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, alternatively, I connect all of this to the bus transceiver here. I've already done that. This is the bus transceiver to go out to the bus. Um, I don't want to connect anything to the inside of this because otherwise that would be stupid. If I connect it to this side, then it's, that's already what I'm doing. I've already connected it on the inside, essentially. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to just walk away and, uh, revisit with fresh eyes, uh, another day. Man, I was so excited to have this part be done and connect the rest of this to the bus. But I also need to sleep because I have a meeting in the morning. So thanks so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you again next week and uh, possibly on Sunday for Crusader Kings. Check out the Discord link in the description. Follow the things. Spiel, spiel. Have a great night.